Hey guys, the Explorer 4 here, Horrorboy465. Welcome back to some more reviews. And today, uh, talking about a movie that was very, very fun to revisit, very, very fun to rewatch, and I'm glad I rewatched it. Uh, unfortunately, I will have to watch the sequel probably later on today. Um, that review might be up today, might be up tomorrow, I'm not too sure. I am not too motivated to see the second movie. Um, this should have been a one movie deal. There should not have been sequels. Kevin Bacon at the end of the movie died. His character died, so there there should not have been sequels to this movie. Of course, the movie I'm talking about today is Hollow Man. Now, Hollow Man is a film from 2000. It's a 5.7 on IMDb, which I kind of disagree with that. I think it should be higher than that. I think it should be, you know, like at least a 6.0 or something like that. I really enjoyed this movie. Um, I guess I get a 5.7, it came out in 2000, directed by Paul Verhoeven, uh, who's actually a director I think I recognize, if I can see his filmography here. Uh, yeah, he's director of Total Recall, Starship Troopers, Robocop, uh, did Basic Instinct, uh, did a lot of, like, really good movies. I gotta say, like, I really enjoyed Robocop, Robocop is awesome. Uh, Total Recall is a movie I really want to see. Yes, I haven't seen Total Recall yet. I know, it's shame on me, I should see it. I know, it's how, how freaking dare you, horror boy, not seeing Total Recall. I know. <clears throat> I know I should see Total Recall. I really do want to see it. But the director of those two movies, Starship Troopers and uh, Total Recall, he went on to direct this movie. Now, Hollow Man is a movie that I grew up with as a kid. This is a movie that I was very young, and I've seen it. Um, I believe I actually have this same, not really the same DVD, but this DVD edition, the special edition uh, uh, DVD. I believe this is the same, not the same exact, because that DVD I think got broken, but I rebought this one with Hollow Man 2 a couple like years later, but this is kind of the same edition that I used to have, and I always really enjoyed that poster. Um... And the DVD design itself is really cool. And also the main menu is actually pretty cool too. You actually have like a 3D like, you know, CGI opening to the DVD menu. It's very, very neat looking. Kind of like, you know, when DVD started coming out, you had those really cool openings. Like X-Men had some really cool openings and Spider-Man. And, you know, these really cool DVD uh, menu openings. I always liked that about these earlier DVDs that came out. Uh, it's like nowadays DVDs don't really do that anymore. It's just like the, the poster and then the play, scene select, and some special features if you got that. And of course the setup and everything like that. But they don't really do a lot of like, for DVDs at least anymore. I understand it's because Blu-rays are preferred now, but um, I still get DVDs on certain movies because Blu-rays are a little pricey. And to get all the movies I'm collecting on Blu-ray would cost a lot of freaking money. And um, there's movies like Chainsaw 4, Next Generation, or Exorcist 2, or uh, Halloween 6, or in my opinion, H2O, or Resurrection, or the Rob Zombie movies. Like, those movies, I, I don't want to get on Blu-ray, because I'm not really a big fan. I'm not really a big fan of those movies. Um, but this movie, I don't know. I don't know if this has a Blu-ray or not, but if it does, you know, I can definitely give it a pickup if it's pretty cheap. Uh, I don't know, this DVD is actually pretty good anyway, so, you know, the, the audio is great, the uh, cinematography in the movie is very clear, so this DVD is not that bad. Um, and I thought that what's cool about this movie is, first of all, the idea of pretty much like The Invisible Man. I'm not really too sure if you call this a remake of The Invisible Man, but... It's a rated R version of The Invisible Man. It's The Invisible Man if he went completely psycho and started killing people. That's kind of like what Hollow Man is. So I'm not really sure if I would call it an Invisible Man remake or something like that. Or a reimagining of The Invisible Man. It's more of like if The Invisible Man became a psychotic killer and started killing people. Now, I know that in the original Invisible Man, he kind of went psycho and stuff like that. But I don't know if he like killed anybody. Um, then again, he might have, but I don't I haven't seen those movies yet. So um, I know it's like the Invisible Man, there's like the Invisible Agent, there's like like other sequels to it as well. 
but I haven't seen his movies yet. But Hollow Man, like, just growing up, I always thought that the idea of this invisible psychopath was, like, an awesome idea. And the movie is just very well shot, very well directed. It's very professionally filmed. Um, the acting, I mean, you got a freaking awesome cast. I just got on the cast right here. I mean, of course, you got Kevin Bacon, but you also got Josh Brolin, which is crazy because when the movie opened, I'm like, Josh Brolin's in this movie? I totally forgot that. But you also got Elizabeth Shue, you got uh, Kim Dickin, you got Greg Runberg, uh, Joey Slotnick, Mary Randall, William Devane. Oh, that's under Kramer. Um,. I think, yeah, William Devane, I'm not too sure. But the main cast of, like, the, the professors that they focus on in this movie, they all did a very good job. The cast in this movie did great. The acting was spot on. The uh, character interactment, I mean, they just, they really seemed like a fun team of scientists just doing what they can to research this invisibility formula. And Kevin Bacon is sort of like, I would be honest, he's kind of like an ass in the movie. But he's like, he's an ass, but he's not like you hate him. He's still like a, he's like a, a likable bad guy. I mean, he's a bad guy, but you also do see a other side of him that, you know, he's kind of nicer, but he's kind of also a show off. So Kevin Bacon did a really good job playing that, sort of this guy who, you know, shows off and he... You know, he has, like, a nice car, he acts like he's the smartest guy in the world, he calls himself God, so he's very, you could say, an, an asshole, but you, you can also like him a little bit. Um, he's, he's still a fun character. And you find out that him and, like, Elizabeth Shue, they were in a relationship, and they handled that very well. But before I even go into more of the details, I want to get into the story first. Uh, the movie is pretty much about a group of scientists who have invented this invisibility formula that they're using on animals, such as, like, gorillas, dogs, and cats, and stuff like that. And the thing about this invisibility formula is that they can turn things invisible, but they have a hard time bringing them back from the invisibility formula. So, Kevin Bacon sort of does this illegal sort of thing where he becomes the first human test subject for this uh, invisibility formula. And basically, it's a very basic plot. I mean, he turns invisible. It's a very painful-looking scene where, like, you see, like, veins and bones and just very well-done CGI. That's another thing. This movie does use CGI, but it uses CGI in the most effective and well-done way that I've seen. Like, very few horror films do it like this. They use it where it looks good, it doesn't look fake, it looks perfect, it matches the scene, it, it's, it's appropriate, it's necessary. It doesn't, it's not just there because, well, we're going to put some CGI in there because, you know, practical effects all well. No, to do practical effect of, t of somebody turning invisible from, like, the skin going back and the hair turning invisible and all the muscle and tissue and bones going invisible... That, I don't know if that can be done, like, you know, it, it possibly could be done with practical effects, but the CGI effects really help that scene, and they look really good. So, Kevin Bacon pretty much becomes, he, he even has a joke about the Invisible Man, um, and, you know, he's basically invisible. And I like how there's like a slow build up, it's not like Kevin Bacon is automatically a psycho or anything like that. Uh, it's, it's basically like... You know, you slowly see him starting to slip away, and he's like, he can't sleep, he is feeling the effects of the formula, it's starting to affect him psychotically, and by the end of the movie, Kevin Bacon becomes a complete psycho, and he starts to, he basically locks in the, the, uh, the scientists in this underground lab, and he's pretty much going to knock them off one by one. And... I put this movie on a slasher tag a, long, a, a bit ago, like months ago, I put this on a slasher tag video. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's a slasher film this time around watching it. I mean, the end of the movie, you do have some death scenes, but I don't know if I'd call it a slasher flick, so I kind of feel like I'm in the wrong for doing that, for putting it in a slasher film category, because it's not really a slasher film, it's more about the 
you know, the science behind it and the effects and the beautiful cinematography and the great score. I love the score of this movie. Very, very fantastic score. Um, it's about the acting and the characters and getting involved with the characters and that slow build to where Kevin Bacon does turn psycho. And you got some decent death scenes. I mean, this one girl, she gets strangled. This one guy gets drowned in the pool. Um, this other girl, she gets pretty much put to sleep and he cracks her neck. Um, this other guy gets his neck gouged because Kevin Bacon picks him up and throws him and he lands right on this thing and it gouges his neck and he bleeds out and dies pretty much. Um, I don't know if there's really any other death scene besides that. Uh, I, I kind of, if they are, then I kind of forgot a minute. I think he electrocutes somebody as well. Maybe mistaken. But I totally forgot the, the death scene of that guy. Oh yeah, I know what happens to him. Uh, Kevin Bacon takes this bar and like shoves it through him and then impales him and kills him. So you do have some decent death scenes. I mean, it's a pretty bloody finale of the film. But it's more of like a slow build character developing film and then you get the psycho part of it where Kevin Bacon goes psycho and starts killing people. You know, it's not like it's about the slasher and, you know, the, the gore throughout the entire movie and just the entire movie being a body count. It's it's different than that. It's just a very... Hey, sorry about that, guy. I just got a call from somebody. I had to cut this video a little bit. Um, sorry about that. If it's a weird, awkward cut right there. I just got a call from somebody and I had to, you know, just pause the video real quick. But anyway, continuing on with the with the uh, with the review, I kind of forgot where I had the cat took me off guard. But um, I don't remember. I just described the death scenes and just very well shot, very well done cinematography, and just really really enjoyable score. Just this movie is just very well done. I mean, it's a very enjoyable flick. I'm a big fan of this movie. And, uh, yeah, so anyways, guys, I know that was a little bit of an awkward cut there, but somebody had actually called me, so I had to take that call real quick, and sorry about that. But, anyways, guys, thanks for watching the review on Hollow Man. Really enjoy it. Very, very clever, smart, well-filmed, uh, well-acted, and just overall a great horror film that I really enjoy. I think it deserves a higher rating than 5.7 is what I got. Yeah, 5.7. I should have got like a 6.7 or a 6.8. That's how I probably would rate it. Uh, but anyways, guys, thanks for watching my review on Hollow Man, and I will see you guys in the next review, which will unfortunately be, unfortunately be Hollow Man 2. Yippee! Woo! But anyways, guys, until then, thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you guys in the next review. The Explorer 4 is out. See you guys later.